Hello everybody and welcome to Mental Architecture, Building the Mind One Moment at a Time. I'm Howard Blumenfeld, the author of the book, which is available on Amazon. Today's episode we're going to talk about what is the size of the universe. Before we can talk about the size of the universe, we need to talk about where the universe came from. It's important to understand the origin of something before you can talk about where it's going or what's happening to it. So there are many theories about how the universe began, but the most universally accepted one is the idea of the Big Bang. But what happened before the Big Bang? Where was the universe? And it's a lot like trying to ask yourself, where were you before you were born? You could argue that you were all over the place. There was no you. Um, all those arguments would be valid. And the same could be said about the universe, that before the universe was there, there was no universe, but what was there? There was, according to Stephen Hawking, an infinitely dense singularity, a really small point of super hot stuff that just all of a sudden exploded and created the universe. But how did that process happen? And what are the implications for the supposed expansion of the universe? Or even for discussing the idea that the universe is infinite. So I'd like to start off with a quote by a man named Charles Choi. The universe did not expand into space, as space did not exist before the universe. According to NASA, instead it is better to think of the Big Bang as a simultaneous appearance of space everywhere in the universe. Of course, the Big Bang wouldn't have made any sound because there would be no humans around to hear it. It's kind of the whole, if a tree falls in the forest and nobody's around to hear it fall, did it really fall? Kind of philosophical question. But that being said, the universe appears to have started probably from an infinitely dense point. The question is exactly how did that point even come into being and what was there before that? And there are some modern theories now that say that our universe emerged from another universe through a white hole that basically was the other side of a black hole from another universe where all the light and other energy came in at a really fast uh, pace collapsing under its own gravity and then through an enormous amount of force came out the other end and formed our universe. Um, now the idea that our universe came from another universe is an interesting one and if the theory about white holes and black holes is correct then we can never really determine if our universe came from another one because white holes would expunge matter at a pace, at a pace that's incredibly fast and inside that transition point, all time comes to a complete stop, at least observable time. There's another kind of time called imaginary time that would exist in there, but it wouldn't be something that humans could interpret. According to physicist Stephen Hawking, there was never a Big Bang that produced something from nothing. It just seemed that way from mankind's perspective. So often in life, we think of everything having a beginning and an end, just like our birth and our death. The beginning is our birth, the end is our death. but Beginning and end are human invented concepts. There's really no evidence of things beginning or ending once you strip away the humanity of it, and it is entirely possible that our universe was always there in some form. Even if it was as a singularity, even if time ceased to exist, remember these are human measured quantities. So there's a certain kind of sameness or a certain kind of um, invariance to what, what may exist as the universe. So for example, you know, you can think of it as maybe looking at things from a different perspective. So if you look at the universe from the human perspective, it appears like there was a big bang and that matter expanded outward and just keeps expanding forever and ever. But maybe from a different perspective, that's not how it looks at all. Because the idea of something even looking a certain way involves the human eyes and the human brain. So. We really do start to get into the realm of speculation here, but back to the original point, can a universe be infinite? And my argument is no, it cannot be infinite. Now maybe in the sense of it expanding and expanding, that would sort of, that would be the idea of infinity in some kind of physical form that it just keeps expanding. But eventually, even if it keeps expanding, it's gonna burn out of energy at some point. And some, uh, physicists believe in the big crunch, which is where all matter expands and then kind of collapses back onto itself. And then this process just repeats over and over again. So there's really nothing infinite about it. And, you know, an infinite number of stars in, this, in the night sky, there wasn't an infinite number amount of energy. 
that uh, created our universe. So why should there all of a sudden be an infinite number of stars? It's kind of like grains of sand on the beach. Stars are constantly changing their form anyway. This is kind of a preview, this kind of logic that I'm using of the next chapter, No Perspective, which is where we're going to start in the next video, where we get into the idea of perspective and how that shapes the reality around us. But we can apply that lens even to the universe and really start to have our mind blown by some of these really weird thoughts. Right before his death, Stephen Hawking and Thomas Hertog came up with another theory of how the universe works. And so they use the analogy of making some bread dough or pizza dough and putting it in the oven. And we'll just assume that it's like perfectly flat in the oven. And then we turn the oven on and as the, as the oven heats up, the universe starts to expand or the pizza starts to grow. And, and the equivalent analogy to heat in an oven is gravity. The gravity pulls the matter further and further apart. And so you can think of the flat sheet of pizza dough as like a possible, all possible universes. And then gravity or the heat is the bubble that's forming. And in the absence of gravity, just like in the absence of heat, that bubble would have never formed or if without gravity, the bubble would just collapse back onto itself and be a two dimensional hologram essentially. So I wanna conclude this chapter and this section just by reminding you that all numbers are human inventions. All numerical concepts, such as the infinite, are also human concepts. And what's really out there may be something that we'll never know about, but we can just get some idea of. We know that gravity exists. We know that gravity plays a very large role in the shape of our universe. And it's very challenging to imagine a universe without gravity. But if you, if you get rid of gravity, you get rid of the almost like the the bubbles in the dough. It just, everything just flattens out. So could the universe be flat? A lot of people, there are a lot of scientists who think that it's flat. Truth is, we don't know what shape the universe has, and we can't answer that question right now. But it is interesting to speculate. There's nothing that I've found in nature anywhere that is infinite. Things can expand and expand, but eventually the expansion will stop. It has to. Things run out of energy. So it's interesting that we have a mathematical concept, definitely has applications, but not in the sense that a lot of people might think. So there's basically no getting near infinity, getting to infinity, or going beyond it. There just is no infinity. So thank you for joining me for another episode of Mental Architecture, and I hope you'll continue to join me. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and comment below, and I'll see everybody next time. Have a great day.